Did y'all know that most of us aren't really living our lives? We're living somebody else's. What the heck are you talking about, Cassandra? Ready to take a journey with me to discovering the life that you were meant to live? I'm ready when you are. What's up, savages, and welcome back to the Business Savage Podcast. I am your business coach and your host, Cassandra Britton. I am a serial entrepreneur here to spark that hunger inside of business owners and reignite their flame to take their business to the next level. If you haven't already discovered our new Instagram account, please do me a favor, pause me, give me a second, go over and follow us on your Instagram. It's at the.business.savage. For any of you that are new here, our old account, the CB Mindset, it was hacked about seven weeks ago. So we really appreciate you helping us rebuild. So friends, I need you to do a deep dive with me today. We have been talking a lot about business strategy and helping business owners from literally all over the globe step into their power, learn the strategy that works for their business, and ultimately grow their business or scale their business. But today, I want to take a second and I really want to focus on mindset, right? Half of what I do, I should say more than half of what I do, has a mindset component to it. So one of the most common things that y'all tell me that you like to listen to this podcast for is the kick in the pants that you get. So here we go. In today's episode, I'm going to tell you how you aren't living your life. You are living somebody else's and how we can begin to step into our true life's purpose. I'm excited for this one. Before we dive into the juicy stuff, I'm going to pause you just for one second here to give a shout out to our business of the week. This week's business of the week is Hive Beauty and Hive Society. A dear friend of mine, Amanda Rose, is the owner of Hive Beauty, which offers 600 plus beauty products to artists worldwide. And Hive Society is launching in the spring. She is a serial entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in marketing, branding, and building disruptive, intelligent businesses. Her work and passion for entrepreneurship has led her to win a number of prestigious awards and recognition for her efforts and positive impact in her community. She is an ardent champion of building relationships and sharing her stories, including her epic failures in businesses, in the hopes of inspiring others to make bold moves forward. Amanda has been a huge part of my journey and growth of my first business in my beauty salon, and she continues to inspire me daily. If y'all are in the beauty industry and you are looking for some advice or you're looking to purchase some products, please head over to at Hive Beauty or at Hive Society and it's www.hivebeauty.com. Now let's get you back to the show. Okay, friends, are you guys buckled in and ready for today? So let me walk you through this one. When we are born, We have certain aspirations. We have intuitions that are innately built into us, okay? We either like somebody or we don't like somebody. We don't like eating mushrooms because we actually really don't enjoy them. That's me, guys. We like swimming or we don't, right? There's all of these things that we just know how we feel about them when we're kids. And as we get older, our parents start to shape our thoughts and our perception of things, Now, not necessarily is that in a good way or in a bad way. Obviously, sometimes it is. But most of the time, it's just your parents placing their own life beliefs onto you. Now, if you're fortunate enough to grow up with both of your parents and you get to experience this from two different perspectives, one of them likes the city, one of them doesn't, you know, one of them likes the country, one of them tells you to wear pants, the other says, do what you want, kid. One day she's playing hockey. The other one says, fine, but I don't want her to get hurt, right? Our parents, they start to shape our perspectives. All of a sudden, we get to an age when we naturally may have liked something. Maybe we've been inclined to try it or to react a certain way. But because of what our parents, our family, our friends, our teachers, our surroundings have been telling us, showing us, and drilling into us, we start to change our own natural intuitions about things. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. Hopefully, 
your parents are doing a great parenting job and encouraging you to explore your own decisions rather than placing their fears and limitations onto you. But here's the reality. For those of us who have spent a lot of time in personal development and have become very aware of your own thoughts, we try our best not to allow our doubts and our fears to be bestowed upon our circle, right? We try to work through these things on our own before we allow it to influence those around us. But it still happens. Our parents, our friends, our family, society, teachers, your bosses, everyone around you is constantly shaping your thoughts and reality from a very young age. We allow their doubts, their limitations that they have placed on themselves, their insecurities, their fears, their worries, their lack of ability to play big, we allow it to fall onto us. And we start to judge our own judgment. We start to wonder, do I like that? Am I capable of that? Is that realistic? How many of you have taken a leap into something because somebody else told you that you should do it? Something maybe that you didn't think that you even wanted to do, but somebody told you that you should, so you did it anyways. I want you to really think about it. Here's a great example. School. It is 2022 now, and the need to have a university degree or a college diploma is still there. Many think that in order to be successful and have the job of your dreams and make lots of money and have the house that they dream of, they must go to college or university. Now, sometimes this is true, but other times it is not My parents told me out of high school that I should go to college, that that's what people did. And if I wanted to be not the bum, that I should go to university as well. So what did I do? I went. I was 17 years old when I first went into my first year of university without a freaking clue what I actually wanted to do with my life. I had just finished playing competitive hockey six times a week on the ice. I had finally decided I wanted a social life. And here I was off to university to study kinesiology because I liked sports, but I had no freaking clue what I wanted to do with it. Well, shortly after, I realized that not only was university not the place for me, but kinesiology was not for me. I learned from doing. I don't learn from reading textbooks and having theories thrown at me to analyze. I went from a very small high school to one of thousands in my program with nothing but a number associated with my identity. If I could go back to that moment when I spent $20,000 of my savings on my first year of university, knowing what I know now, I would never have gone. Did that year build character? Sure. I had my first sip of alcohol. I went to my first party. I got my first fake ID taken away from me. Because in high school, I was too damn busy with sports to ever experience any of that. How many of you were told that you should go to school? Or you should take that job? Because it seems like the logical, responsible thing to do. But you don't really think in your soul that that was the right decision for you. Here's another example for you. I'm a 32-year-old female, and I am told by clients, family, friends, and sometimes even strangers I meet on the airplane that I should be in a relationship. I should be married, and I should have babies. I have had men tell me that I shouldn't be chasing business dreams and should find a rich man and settle down. If y'all could see my face right now. To this day... I'm not even sure I want children. My old school mother and father would be astonished to hear that, but it's true. When I think of my life, my true purpose, and I picture my future, I don't know if children exist. Now, I don't know if it's just that they aren't in my five-year plan or if they aren't in the plan at all, but what I do know is that I get to decide. Not some stranger on the airplane, or one of my clients who's pushing 40, who's angry with herself that she doesn't have kids yet, if I hear, your clock is ticking one more damn time. Anyways, before I go down that path, 
My point is, at some point along the journey, we are taken off of our true path. Here's how I like to look at it for all of y'all visual learners. I like to think of our lives in a linear line, okay? So we've got us at the bottom when we're little itty bitty babies and we have your life purpose in a straight line. Now, life is going to pull you in all kinds of beautiful directions and realizations. Hopefully, if you are open to realizing them, you will find signs from the universe of what that path is, but it will constantly be pulling you off of that course. I believe that people and their should goals constantly are pulling us off of what we wanted to be, who we wanted to be, and what we believed in us, in our core from birth. It tests us. It tests our ability to know ourselves and what we want. But the further we become from that line, the further off alignment we become. We feel like we've lost ourselves. We find ourselves unhappy, depressed, drinking, smoking, and unclear on the future. The more that we are able to find our way back to that true alignment that we started at and needed when we were children, the happier that we are, the more connected, more grounded, and more fulfilled that we actually feel. Now, we can't blame those around us. They are putting other people's should goals that were put onto them onto you. Your parents are likely trying to do the absolute best that they could with the upbringing that they have experienced, what they learned to be right or wrong, or their culture, what they believed. Here's another example for you. I recently moved downtown Toronto. My mother was terrified. And I remember from a very young age, heading to a Jays game with my father and clinging so damn tight to his hand because I was terrified of letting go. And when he asked me, why are you holding on so tight? I said, because mommy said that someone's going to take me if I don't hold on tightly to you. At 32 years old, moving downtown Toronto, my mother still has this fear. Imagine I let her thoughts, her limitations, her fears that were bestowed onto her stop me from traveling the world, from experiencing the things that I am experiencing. All right, here's a fun one for you. My sister is Canadian. Our background is German and English, but my mother grew up on a German Air Force base. My sister's husband is Ecuadorian. He only recently became comfortable with speaking English, and they fell in love basically with body language, hand signals, and pure energy. Do you think that his culture and his view of the world is probably slightly different than my sister's? Absolutely. The way that we were raised our cultural norms, things that are sacred to our beliefs and his are very different. But the beautiful thing is they have decided together what they both wanted, the life that they both wanted to live. My parents hate that she lives down in Ecuador and likely will probably raise their family down there. And it's what they both want. I can be more proud of her and for them for sticking to their true authentic purpose and following what they truly want rather than listening to people say, you should raise your kids in Canada. The education system is better. So here's my challenge to you. I have given you guys a lot of examples, gotten a little personal with some stuff that's going on in my life and relating this back for you. But I want you guys to go through these six areas of your life. We're going to start with career, relationships, spirituality, then self, passion, lifestyle, and physical. Are you living these six areas of your life for you? Or are you living them based off of other people? Here's some examples to get your wheels spinning. Career. Are you working in a career that you enjoy, that fills your soul, that doesn't feel like work? that you don't check the clock every five damn minutes, that you can finally put your work down because you just love to do it that much. If not, why not? How did you get into the career that you're in now? And what is one action that you can take to get you back to the career that would actually give you fulfillment? Relationships. Are you in one? 
Are you not in one? Are you happy in one? Does your partner bring out the best in you? Have you settled? Are you with them because it feels like you'd be lost or it's more work to just start again? Is it easier to just stay? Or is this your person? This person brings you joy, makes your life better every day. You're being true about your sexuality. Are you with someone that you shouldn't be with because someone told you that you should? Are there friends in your life that you still talk to just because it's been a long time and you feel like you have to, not because they actually give you energy? If you are not in alignment here, what is one action item that you can take to get you back into alignment in your relationships? Spirituality. Are you following what you believe? If you're spiritual, if you're religious, do you practice what your heart truly believes? Or do you follow and practice something that society, a friend, a family, a partner tells you that you should believe? Self. Do you love yourself? Do you love who you are, what you stand for? And do you constantly compare yourself and think that you should be more like someone else because society tells you that you should? Passion. Are you spending time doing the things that you are passionate about? Maybe you love reading outside. Maybe you love traveling. Maybe you love sports. Maybe you love playing the guitar. What is it? Are you not doing it because someone told you that you should be home with your family or you should give that up now? You're a dad. You shouldn't be interested in video games anymore. You're an adult. Why? Who told you that? And what passions have you put aside for other people? Lifestyle. Are you living the lifestyle that you want? This one always gets me. I used to work for Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Raptors, and many would argue, what a dream job, right? Five women out of 80 some odd men graduated from my sport business management program, and all 80 of them wanted to work here, and I got the job. But I hated my lifestyle. I hated the go train. I hated the commute. I hated the desk work. I hated the lack of freedom. I would count down the hours to lunch till I could take another break, till I could catch the go train home. I was too tired to work out. I was too tired to play hockey anymore. And I hated my lifestyle. All because people told me I should love this job. I should want this job. Now, I run three successful businesses on my way to four and have to pinch myself some days realizing that what I do daily living my life of pure fulfillment is how I make a healthy living. So are you living the lifestyle that you want or that somebody else told you that you should want? And the last is physical. This is referring to your diet, your physical being. Do you eat meat? Do you not eat meat? because you want to, or because somebody told you that you shouldn't? Do you work out because you love it, or because somebody else told you that you should? Do you work out in the AM, even though you despise every damn second of it? Because Cassandra, she works out at 5.30 or 6 o'clock every day, but that's not your truth. And what about your physical being? Do you wear the hairstyle that you like? Here's a fun one for you guys. Up until recently, I would never wear my hair up, ever, because I was told that women don't wear their hair up. They look like men when they do. And that a lady should have long hair and it should always be down. So now I wear my hair up whenever I damn well feel like it. I've been told I shouldn't wear makeup because I don't need it. But guess what? I love it. Guys, I'm a makeup artist. It's part of my creative expression. You guys get my point here. The purpose of this episode is to encourage you to reflect on all avenues of your life. Are you living the life that you truly want? Or are you living a life of shoulds for other people? The more we can identify how we have become unaligned and acknowledge in the future every time we are unaligned how to get back into alignment, we will begin to step into our lives' true purpose. The way that you felt as a little kid, the things that you wanted to achieve when you were just a child, And there wasn't anybody telling you any differently. It's always going to happen. There's no avoiding it. But it's your job to decide the life that you want to live. (laughs) 
Well, savages, that is all that I've got for you guys for today. Thanks for sticking through to the end. And do me a favor, take yourself through those six steps and figure out where you are unaligned in your life and how you can get yourself back into alignment. Also, please share this on your social channels and tag us on our new Instagram so that our followers can find us. It's at the.business.savage. I appreciate you. Go slay your day and start living your life. Remember, a savage doesn't let anyone or anything stand in their way. They will get knocked down, but they will always get the heck back up. Keep on fighting, friends. Peace, guys.